Nate Saunders, Lawrence Edmonds, and Katie George, as always. Let's get straight to it. Nate, what is the worst sports team name you have ever heard? <laughs> that's a really that's a loaded question, Katie, and a very do good one. Do you know one. where I'm going with this? I think I do. I'm gonna throw out there a name. Now stop me if you've heard this name recently. It's come up on your Twitter feeds. There may be worse names, but it's difficult to find many that are worse than Visa Cash App RB, uh, which obviously we found out this week is what we call the team formerly known as Alpha Tauri and formerly, formerly known as Toro Rosso. Um, I'm sure that there's worse team names, but I can't think of many right now. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty weird. Or as, as we've understood from, I've spoken to people in the team, what it sounds like they're calling it within the team is VCARB, or at least they're referring to it as VCARB, which I think is slightly less bad than Visa Cash App RB, but it's not really saying much, I don't think. So maybe I'm being unnecessarily harsh, but I wonder what you and Lawrence think about, about the merits of that name. I just I want to make sure from a pronunciation standpoint, are you saying VCARB, like corn on the cob, or VCARB, like carbs you eat? Oh, V Cobb would be really good, actually, because you could make a lot of Because your accent cob makes it sound like you're saying V Cobb. Yeah, so I, when I first heard V Cobb, I did the same as you, Katie. Somebody said it to me on the phone, and I said, what on earth, why would they call it V Cobb? I don't understand that. And then I worked out when someone sent me a press release that it's just the acronym of, of the thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I had the same. So V Cobb, I think, if, especially if they came out with a yellow car, that'd be perfect. But sadly, I think that's not going to happen. Otherwise, V Cobb would be an easy an easy out for this <laughs> this uh, whole conundrum around the name. In, in case you haven't seen on social media the firestorm that um, has ensued, Scuderi Alfatari, as Nate has mentioned, has changed their name this season to Visa Cash App RB. Lawrence, what do you make of the name change? I think it's a perfect example of how to destroy a sporting team's identity in one single press release. Um you know, I, I, we've had sponsors' names attached to Formula One teams before. Uh, of course, you have the likes of Red Bull, which is, by its very nature, you know, promoting an energy drink. But it's not quite the same because Visa and Cash App aren't, they don't own this, you know, team that we previously called Alpha Tauri. Toro Rosso before that has its roots in the Minardi Formula One team. Um, you know, they're just sponsors. But the way that Red Bull have decided to rename it with just the RB left on um, makes it very hard to call it anything other than Visa Cash App RB or VCARB. Uh, because just calling it RB, then obviously you want to end up with lots of misunderstandings and confusions with the actual Red Bull team. And I think, you know, it's, 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 it's a real shame because we only have 10 Formula One teams. You know, they're, they're quite a limited resource. And it's nice when fans have something that they can get behind. And even Toro Rosso, which of course is just um, Italian for Red Bull, uh, even Toro Rosso had its a distinct identity. Um, you know, something that was that was really quite cool and you could hold on to. And it was always a young team and, and that kind of thing. And it'll be interesting to see how, you know, to give Red Bull some, some credit here, how they then market this. But I just can't imagine anyone wanting to go and buy Visa Cash App RB merchandise, for example, and walk around with a big Visa sign across their back. I mean, I know people do it with all sorts of other, other you know, brands in in the sport. Of course, Mercedes is essentially a car brand, and Ferrari, you know, even that is is a car brand. But they just have so much more history, so much more identity, so much more connection to the sport that Visa and Cash App just do not have. Yeah, and I think that's a really great point. And I want to call out one of the things I've noticed already from the Red Bull side, mm -hmm. which is kind of the way that the messaging is around this. So I've heard a lot of people, I say a lot of people, people I've spoken to, I think there's a party line within Red Bull already that is, 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 Lawrence made the point perfectly. There is a difference between this and Red Bull coming into Formula 1 in 2004 because they bought the team. I've heard a couple of people within Red Bull say, well, this is the same. Visa Cash App, they're both disruptive brands. They're both coming in and you know they want to upset the status quo. And I think there's nothing less disruptive than a brand like Visa. It's one of the biggest brands in the world. It's I mean, I'm pretty sure if I went to, if I walked down the street out here and I, I don't know why I would do this, but if I said, show me your wallet, what's in there? Most people would have a Visa card of some sort in, in their wallets. It's not, it's not new. Yeah. It's not edgy. It's not anything like that. And Red Bull, when they came in, were exactly that. They were edgy. You know, if you, if you go back and look at the history of Red Bull, when Dietrich Matschitz first kind of brought that concept um, from Asia over to Europe, where it first really became big was in 
nightclubs in Europe. It was, you know, something that people used to kind of get them through the night of, of you know, raves and crazy parties and stuff. So it was edgy. It was seen as something that was, you know, it, it wasn't, it was almost underground and they marketed it that way. And that then translated into their sports. So I think that when Red Bull say that, and I think you're going to hear that a lot this season, you know, I think that's kind of, you know, Keep, mm-hmm. keep an eye out for that in kind of the launches and as we go into the season, you know, our visa cash app, so disruptive, so so left field, which I don't think is true. I think that does a disservice. I think that's Red Bull doing a disservice to themselves because yeah. they genuinely were that when they came in. They genuinely did come in. They obviously have the Red Bull Air Race. They've come in and they've, you know, they've they've bought their way into a lot of different sports. And Dietrich Mateschitz left an incredible legacy for that because his vision, his vision was something that no one had seen before. Visa and Cash App. I mean, I don't really know much about Cash App as much as I do about Visa, but Lawrence is mm-hmm. completely right. Like, you're not going to go and buy their their branding and wear it. Red Bull, at least, was able to lean into that kind of the they were they've they've always been the kings of marketing. And I think if you look at other Formula One teams, they've always seemed to step ahead of the rest in terms of doing things a bit differently to other people. Um, so yeah, so I struggle with that side of it. Um, and yeah, I, I think if 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 they'd somehow kept, I think the RB thing as well is a really fascinating part of the name. Mm-hmm. Because originally, you know, the talk was, and as far as I understand, it was still in play until about two weeks ago, was it was originally going to be Visa Cash App. I mean, JP Morgan was in the running at one point. Hugo Boss was in the running at one point. Um, but they were going to they were gonna finish it by calling it Racing Bulls, which you can imagine would have been a headache because you'd have had Red Bull and Racing Bulls. So again, <laughs> that would have been, but at least there would have been something that you can call it other than RB. You know, maybe you would have called it I, I, you know, maybe it would just been the Bulls. I, who, who knows? But it's, yeah, the, the fact that the, the they've almost forced you into calling it some form of Visa Cash App, I think, is is the most egregious part of it. Um, it's an incredible deal for Red Bull. I mean, I think this is in the region of about 35 million a year, um, you know, which is... How many years? Money. What's the uh, contract? I've, I think it's about three, but I mean, I've been told multi-year okay. and usually that's two, three. Um, it's 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 not short term. You know, I think that there's an expectation they'll be staying around for a long, long time. So from that point of view, incredible deal for Red Bull. But yeah, the the kind of the residual blowback has been so negative. And often that stuff does with time, it eases off and people kind of get more used to it. But you wonder with this, I, I just can't see people, I can't see somebody, like I know somebody, one of my good friends has, has always been, a, I tell Lawrence this, it's always quite funny, like he's always been a Force India fan. I've always said, why on earth are you a Force India fan? But it, it goes back to, you know, previously being being Jordan, then being Force India. And then you just can't see somebody willingly saying, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a V-carb or I'm a, I'm a Visa Cash App RB fan. <laughs> it just, you wouldn't tell people that, you know, in the same way you might say I'm a Red Bull fan or a Ferrari fan, even Alpine, you know, Alpine, a team we've kind of, questioned their the logic of that brand before but it is still a strong brand within motorsport you know and, it, and it's a strong team name so so yeah um so that was a long way around to, to to come back to the point about the messaging from red bull's been a bit strange and i think if that continues hopefully fans kind of reject that because i think that is kind of nonsense to say that visa and cash up are similar similarly disruptive to to a, to a company like red bull it'll be interesting to see in three years from now if we made a bunch of out of nothing, you know what I mean? And yeah. it, it, they run with it and we forget about this entirely. Or if in three years they've switched their name because clearly marketability, it hasn't worked. Yeah, but it is a good point because, um, you know, once that deal ends, then presumably it's up for grabs and another mm-hmm. brand might come in with more money. And then at what point do Red Bull say, oh no, we want to keep Visa Cash Up because it's such a great name and that's what we intended to call it in the first place. But I think the big thing is, it's just, it, it kind of shows what that team is which it's always been a second team and um previously it was a way to bring young drivers into the sport to give them a mm-hmm. a grounding uh, usually towards the back of the grid but then prepare them to become red bull drivers and it's been slowly moving away from that i mean obviously with daniel ricardo and the team yuki Tsunoda staying on for i can't remember exactly what's third or fourth year in formula one as well that that identity has gone and now it just seems like it's the you know it's just a way for red bull to make a bit of extra money from being in formula one i just find that really hard to get behind even with someone like daniel ricardo in the team i just don't think there's going to be that many fans of the team going forward um but does that matter i suppose you know does red bull really want to have people following their junior team rather than their senior team maybe not so um I, but it just does seem to be a decision completely dictated by money shouldn't be surprised this is formula one it's you know international sport that's the way things have gone 
But um, I think it's just a, just a bit of a shame because especially when you know got ten of these teams, another one has changed its name from uh, Alfa Romeo, which to be fair was pretty much exactly the same thing, just a sponsor, but it was a name that was historically very linked with with, with, with motorsport. Um, and a team underneath, which is Sauber, and that's changed its name to Stake, which is another name that's quite hard to get on board with. Um, but I suppose. But at least they're still well. at least they're still Sauber. I guess is what you could come back to with that, right? I mean, it's still nonsense, but it's. Well, yeah, I mean, they're quite keen on it being called called Stake, as in you know, in the same way that you could, I guess, still call uh, the Visa Cash App team RB, or if you really wanted to, you call them Alpha Tauri or Toro Rosso. I mean, it's kind of you know. Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, there's there's probably more logic to calling them them Sauber still. But the other thing about that, of course, is it's changing to Audi in 2026, so it's kind of a stopgap. But yeah, I'm not sure what this is, whether this is a stopgap, whether it's long term. It just yeah, it just feels like it's something very hard to to be excited about. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.